Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Spaceman Climbs. Excuse me, and today we have a human versus undead game for you. So going into it, as you just saw, it was actually random versus random, so I didn't know I was against an undead at this point. And that leaves me with a number of options. There are... Well, I guess I'll start with the map. Centaur Grove is a very large map. It's definitely not played competitively. I don't think it's been in any, you know, tournaments in, in years and years, if ever. Um, but I still do like to play it on ladder. I'm glad it's a ladder map. I'm glad it's not a competitive map. But here it's a lot of fun because there are so many creep camps. There are so many item camps and goblin <clears throat> uh, laboratories and warp gates and gold mines. There's lots of opportunity to do kind of out of the box things and I say that and here you see I'm doing the complete standard human build so what I'm thinking is that I, I want to go Archmage first and I know the Archmage is is what everyone goes right because he's such a good hero he's such a good starting hero but I think there is a lot to be said for going him first because the Archmage works or sorry there's a lot to be said in going Archmage first when you want to try and do some kind of you know, not not typical strategy, because the Archmage with Brilliance Aura allows for pretty much any second hero to be viable. I kind of think of him in the same way as I do uh, Night Elf with Moonwells. You know how the, everyone says Night Elves can get away with going any neutral hero first, because they have the Moonwells, and that's an extra supply of mana and health that the other races aren't able to provide for free. The Archmage kind of... Kind of you know, it's not obviously as powerful as Moonwells, but it still gives this kind of advantage because Brilliance Aura makes up for a lot of the weaknesses that the neutral heroes have early on. Same with, like, the Mountain King. The Mountain King is so much more powerful when he has an Archmage supporting him, right? Anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going Archmage. I, you can see I'm scouting. I still haven't seen what race I'm against, but my plan right now is just try and fast expand because I've seen that he's not here. And if, because he's not here, that means this camp is going to be very difficult for him to get to. He's either going to have to run all the way across like this, or from this point he'll have to run across, or use the warp gates. But this is, at the very least, it's going to be safe for me to creep most of the time. It's going to be hard for him to get here. And I'm hoping I can get away with an expansion that doesn't get harassed all that much. So you can see I've got my four militia coming in. Otherwise, I have my base. I'm building a couple more peasants. This should be turning into an arcane tower soon. I know a lot of people don't get the arcane tower quite as quickly as I do, but I find it just, you know, a stronger player doesn't need to have it, but for someone like me who can struggle with defending my base and microing my militia properly, having that early arcane tower is just invaluable. The, the cost-benefit ratio is just purely in my favor. So, so in my favor. So I always get it here. You can see I'm doing the same kind of thing at my expansion. I'm prioritizing getting an arcane tower up here. Power building it, I'm going to upgrade it to an arcane tower right away. And then I'm going to try and stockpile some wood until I'm able to start my expansion. Yeah. Now this peasant, I had him build a farm here. I still haven't scouted, which is not ideal, but I did pick up a wand of illusion, so I'm sending illusion archmages out in order to do the, do the scouting for me. And I'm going to keep my hero and units near the tower, because I want this to go up. So I'm going south, but I'm just going to go to the easy green camp here because I want to just get this, not take many, much, many damage, not take much damage on my units and be able to quickly retreat back to the tower and fall back and hold that position. So I've got this guy running up north as well, but just as I start creeping, an undead runs into my base and I run into his base down here. And I see Dreadlord and Ghouls. So this means, you know, a couple different things. It means this... Obviously, my expansion attempt is looking pretty grim. This tower is definitely going to go down. If I try and fight and hold this, he outnumbers me. I do have water elementals, but he outnumbers me, so this is going to be a tough fight. I'm going to lose units. My expansion is going to be very delayed. Um, this also means I have to watch out for fast expansions, right? Dreadlord strategies usually, usually indicate a fast expansion, and if not, it indicates a lot of ghouls and maybe necromancers or gargoyles, it depends, I'll have to scout. But first thing I'm thinking is expansion's in trouble and I have to see if he's expanded. So I did send this uh, Archmage illusion down to this one. I see there's no expansion here. This guy's gonna run in this direction <clears throat> and I'm gonna run north to you know, try and at least 
engage the Stradlord ghouls a little bit. So like I said, he's he's focusing down the tower. I'm sorry, I love my coffee. Cancels the tower, and then he goes for a sleep surround on my hero. So this is not good, he's got my surround, or he's got these surrounds. So I teleport out, and he doesn't get any more kills. So that was definitely a win for him. He, he managed to cancel my tower. I'm not expanding anymore, and I had to teleport out. But I didn't lose all that much. Hopefully I'm not going to need to teleport again in the near future, so it won't matter too much. And I didn't lose many units. I got, kept all my peasants back there who were repairing alive as well. They came in the teleport. But now I am completely overstocked on lumber peasants. So my wood is going to be very high. And I started my tech almost immediately after he came in to scout my expansion. So now going back to what I was saying before, I'm expecting he's probably tried to fast expand or he's going to try and fast expand. So I came straight here to scout this because this is a very easy one for him to get to and see that he hasn't crept it yet. So that was good. And then I came north to try and get the, the observer ward and find that he's already here. So I managed to snag the kill, which is big. And I get the item, but he got the observer ward. So he now has permanent vision on this shop, which is trouble. Here. He is going for a sleep surround, which I don't have a teleport, so this could be bad as well. Obviously the creeps and my level, my two level one water elementals are going to do a lot of damage to his ghouls. <clears throat> but if he can get a kill on my hero, that would be really big for him. So I, I know what I'm about to say is probably common knowledge for a lot of you, but just, just for those of you who don't know, um, if you're against someone who's trying to surround your heroes, what you should do is take your army and surround your hero yourself. So he casts sleep on me, and you'll notice I'm going to bring this footman, maybe any other of these guys. I'm going to move command them to surround my hero as well, so that when he wakes up, I can run all of the units away together, and I won't be walled off. See here, my footman was holding against. Now they both run north, and he didn't have a surround. I don't know if I explained that well. Either way, it worked out for me. He didn't get the surround. I managed to snag two ghoul kills and scare him off. I also now I've got <clears throat> the rest of this camp under control because I teched a little late and wasn't expanding anymore I have an excess of resources so I'm getting extra footmen that I normally wouldn't I'm also afraid of a, a large swarming ghoul attack so I wanted to have you know it's better to err on the side of caution I think sometimes and in this spot I was just making sure my <clears throat> my army wouldn't be completely overrun so now I'm sending I'm just about to hit tier 2, and I'm sending those four militia back, and I'm going to try and sneak up an expansion again. I'm going to go and creep out this item shop, I think. Yep. And I'm going to try and try and grab the observer ward, so at least I have vision on his side of the map. So we even it out that way. This isn't the most important vision to have. There are more important... Like on Turtle Rock, I think the observer wards are bigger than they are on this map. Um... Mostly because Turtle Rock is a smaller map, and like based on our spawns, there's not going to be a whole lot of movement in this area, right? We're going to be attacking this way, so... It's still critical, it's still great to have vision of the item shops and shop control and map control, but it's not as big as it is on some other maps, I think. Anyway, though, so now I've hit tier 2. I picked up a panda because I saw the Dreadlord, so I'm expecting a massive amount of ghouls coming my way. That's generally what the Dreadlord indicates, so I thought Breath of Fire will be good. I do sacrifice some of the early game strength that you get in the Mountain King, but I was thinking if this goes into a later game, and as my expansion expansion attempt would indicate, I am hoping to go into a bit of a later game. The Panda, I think, will be stronger come level 3 and level 5. Meanwhile, my base, I haven't started it yet, but immediately, I think right now, I'm going to be throwing down two Arcane Sanctums. There's one, there will be a second one. There it is. And I'm going to attack. I spoke about this in one of my, my previous ones recently. But if you're going to expand, attack. If you're going to be building tech structures and you're not sure they're going to be up on time or you're nervous they might attack you, attack. It forces the fight to their base and they're not going to be able to harass your economy. So that's what I'm doing. I come in, I see a Dreadlord that's still level 1, so that's really good for me. I have a big level advantage. <clears throat> and I decided to go right for his Tomb of Relics, which he's left very exposed. So this is this is a nice pick off for me. He definitely should have had it built in a little more. And I send my panda in to scout a bit. I see a Temple of the Damned, a bunch of ghouls, a Temple of the Damned, and a Slaughterhouse. So this is Necrowagon, right? This has to be Necrowagon. Maybe it's just for statues. 
but I'm, I'm thinking Necrowagon. And this is, you know, maybe not the, the strongest <clears throat> demonstration Excuse me again. The strongest demonstration of the strategy just yet. But this is a great map to do it on and great spawn locations because one of the biggest weaknesses of Necro Wagon is that it's it's cumbersome and it's hard to get to your opponent's base. And if I were over here, like bringing it all the way this way and having all these open passages with open passageways for my army to come and poke and prod and pick it apart on the way to this base is really tough, right? That's a long way. But if he just has to do this, it's a lot safer. He is protected on this side by the forest, so I can't prod that side. And it's just, it, it makes sense. It's a short travel distance. So this is kind of a scary situation, even though I'm feeling like I'm ahead in the moment. Necromancers and meat wagons can just, you know, they, they can turn games very quickly. So I start putting pressure on this one Temple of the Damned. I decided I'd try and take it out before, before it got up, and I think I'm going to get away with it. Meanwhile, I'm trying to keep my panda alive, who's under a lot of ghoul fire. He's going for another sleep surround. And I'm just going to focus fire down what ghouls I can. Notice I'm not going for his dreadlord. I'm not thinking I can win the game here. Now, now my panda's surrounded and down. So that, that was a loss for me. I'm using defend, which I really don't need to. He only has his halls of the dead. But that was... That was okay. You know, I cancelled the building. I killed some ghouls. He lost some wood income because his ghouls were fighting. I did lose my hero, so, you know, take you take what you can get. The big deal is, though, that I was able to secure my expansion. There's no way he's going to be able to get up here and stop these towers from going up. I'm, I'm sitting more comfortably now. In my base, straight away getting priest adept training and priests for dispel, because I want to be able to dispel the waves and waves of necromans or skeletons that are going to be coming at me from the necro wagon strategy. Um, I talked about it also in a previous in a previous cast. If the undead does manage to get three armor upgrades on skeletons, then it takes two dispels from a priest in order to kill them. But I'm not worried about that at all at this point. The undead's going for a one base strategy necro wagon. There's no way he's going to have the gold or the resources to tech and to build necromancers, meat wagons, get the appropriate upgrades like exhumed corpuses ghoul frenzy and still be able to get to three armor upgrades it's just not feasible so i come here i want to get this creep out really quickly so that i have access to the fountain of health if i ever need to because for the rest of the game now i want to stay along this path i want to harass him and stay along this path and not give him much time my i'm ahead in hero levels and i don't want him to have the easy path to my base because if I'm caught off guard and all of a sudden he shows up here with a thousand skeletons and I have to teleport in and unclump my units, I'm going to be in trouble. If I can just keep this area clear and, and hold him down while my, my expansion is up and he doesn't have any and for the time being I still believe he doesn't have any, um, I'm going to be in a comfortable spot. So I'm creeping this out. My footmen with defend are great here. Fountain of Healing is helping. With the water elementals I'm able to take out the dragon quickly and I get a robe of plus six intelligence on my panda which is incredible just like I was talking about before with the panda first now I have level two brilliance aura on a panda who also has plus six intelligence I have probably essentially unlimited mana which is massive massive on a panda so hopefully I can get him to level three quickly and that will really really be effective against the massive armies or the massive swarming armies of ghouls and necromancers So now, like I said, I'm going to try and just poke and prod and keep keep this part of the map under control. So I'm around 50 food. I don't want to break it yet. I'm low on wood. So I'm thinking I have to buy some more time, I guess. I don't think I can win by pushing into his base right now. I don't think I can lose by pushing into his base right now. I just need to not overcommit, exploit my resource advantage, wait for my wood to catch up. So I should probably start thinking about investing in a shredder. The problem is I'd have to go all the way north to creep it, so I would lose some time, and that's kind of inopportune. I could try and creep this, but that's still giving him more time for his necromancers to build up, and I don't want that. So I decided I'm going to go in and hit right now, see what he has, reassess. I have a bunch of priests with dis with dispel, so I'm ready to go. And I thought, like, let's see what happens. And we'll go in. He has three meat wagons with exhumed corpses, a bunch of necromancers who are adepts, and he's ready to summon. 
He's got his hero still level one, which is disappointing, and uh, one statue against a bunch of priests, superior hero levels, and a couple of footmen. And this was a lot of fun. So I'm able to quickly get rid of one of the meat wagons, and I'm going to start abusing the spell. And I think this is <clears throat> a lot of fun. This fight, I remember even in the moment, I was having such a good time. Because I'm trying to dodge meat wagons with my priests while dispelling the skeletons. So, you can see he's, he's doing well. He's picking off priests, but I'm also blowing away wave after wave of skeletons. And that's really the experience is starting to pile up. Every time I'm able to dispel a clump of skeletons, that's a really good amount of experience for my two heroes. And the problem with the Exhumed Corpse approach to Necrowag, well, I guess Necrowagons in general here, is that all the bodies are summoned right around one unit, so one clean dispel kills a bunch of units. So you can see now I'm level 5 and 3. I still am down to just 3 priests, but I've been able to pick off a lot of his army. He is down to... well, he rebuilt a meat wagon and is about to lose his second one. Uh, most of his ghouls are dead, he's got a couple necromancers, I've lost all my footmen, and I'm just three priests. So right now, our army size is about even, my heroes are way ahead, look at that, level 5 and level 3 to his level 3. So we gained two levels in this fight, but I also gained a bunch, and it's, it's not even really comparable there, right? So now I'm, I know I'm ahead in resources, for him to rebuild this army is going to be really slow and ponderous, I have the expansion, I have the hero advantage, I can trade everything here. If I can keep my heroes alive, then then I'm good. As long as I don't lose my heroes, I'm good. So I'm, I'm now going to kind of commit to losing these priests and just dispelling as much as I can and keeping them here busy for as long as possible. I got a good breath of fire off on the Necromancers. I'm not sure why I didn't Drunken Haze them first. Definitely should have. I have the unlimited mana. Uh, Handed off an invulnerability potion to my Archmage for no real reason. <laughs> he didn't have a nuke for it. I'm about to lose another priest to a meat wagon. But I'm picking off his necromancers now. So, I started noticing I was <laughs> sleeping a priest. That's how desperate he is. I had to be careful, though, because I was casting some dispel on my own water elementals, which wasn't working out for me. That's something you have to be careful of. Also, my rally points. I had to pull these guys back. But now it's starting to look a little dangerous. My Archmage is almost dead. He's trying to surround with skeletons, which is not going to work because Dispel. Um, so I figured I'm, I'm going to try and take out this statue and I'm going to teleport out. So I think my Panda's going to teleport right now. I thought, okay, well I got one more Breath of Fire Drunken Haze off on this one Necromancer. And I'll, there's a teleport. So I'm going to leave now. He's got three Necromancers left, but he lost most of his army. I'm sitting really comfortable with a level 5-4. Um, I think I was able to jump in before he was ready. If he had gotten across and been in position, he would have... You know, that would have been a tough fight. It was still kind of a tough fight, and it was a lot of fun. It was a, a fight you don't see every day. But <clears throat> I was able to get the jump on him and quickly pick off a, a meat wagon before he was ready. And that, that really, really helped me in that engagement, for sure. Um, I have a priest running south. That's probably a miss rally. I'm tier 3 now. I'm going for tanks. I still haven't broken into high upkeep because my wood was low. So I think my plan now is definitely going to be to go for a uh, shredder. I think, uh, yeah, my army's starting to move out. I see his dreadlord going north. I'm, I'm here for a reason. I know he's about to scout. Where is it? Where is it? It's coming. I swear it's coming. But yeah, there you can see my army is going north for the shredder. Just to grab that, jump over to 80, and then I'm going to pump out a bunch of tanks, some more casters, and some knights. That was my plan. I knew I was so far ahead at this point. There wasn't much he could do. I don't know what's going on. My, there it is. His skeleton finally shows up in my expansion. He sees it. I break into low upkeep, and uh, the game is over. So he scouted my expansion and left. And I guess it looks like a one-sided game, especially looking at the score here. And it, it probably was, but I thought that was a really fun fight, and I I guess I didn't really have to poke and prod while the Necromancer army moved across the map, but it's still, I caught it off guard, and that really solidified the win for me. There was not much you could do at that point. So I thought it was fun. There were a lot of priests against Necromancers, and that's always a good time. Um, so thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you like the video, if you like or subscribe, that would be great.
And uh, either way, have a great rest of your day.